Morning everyone. This video is part of a series that explores Ozymandias by Percy Bysshe Shelley. This particular video is all about the context. We'll cover briefly a few details about Shelley and his poem. As always, there's a link in the description to the other videos, as well as a link to the slides if you want them. Let's get started. So what is context? Context is essentially the things that you know about the poem that can't be seen in the poem. This includes things about the author, their inspirations, and what the world was like at the time the text was written. Shelley, like many poets and artists, did not achieve recognition for his talents until after he died. Due to his outspoken views, lots of publishers refused to publish his work. He was an atheist. In fact, he was even kicked out of Oxford University for writing atheist pamphlets, which was pretty bold at the time. His works also included themes of sedition, which is basically speaking out against the establishment and those in power. So many publishers were scared that they would get arrested for endorsing his viewpoints. So Shelley was well educated. He attended Eton and Oxford University, and he was from quite a wealthy family. His mum was a landowner and his dad was a member of parliament. They weren't exactly poor. And Shelley was a romantic poet. Other romantic poets in our collection include Blake, who wrote London, and Wordsworth, who wrote Prelude. Romantic poetry was a movement in the early 19th century and is characterized by a few features. One of them is rebellion. These poets seemingly wanted to rebel against the rules of the day, particularly the rules and forms of conventional poetry at the time. They believed that poetry should be freer, more expressive, and therefore, romantic poetry is a bit more in touch with emotions. Another feature of romantic poetry is the love for nature. We'll discuss these features in more detail when we begin to discuss the actual poem. Now, as you can see by those dates, 1792 to 1822, Shelley died at the young age of 29. His sailing boat sank off the coast of Italy and Shelley drowned on board. Some say it was due to a bad storm. Some say he was robbed by pirates and they sank the boat. And others claim that he was assassinated due to his outspoken views. In truth, no one is 100% clear on what actually happened. Ozymandias was written in 1817 and first published in 1818 and is one of Shelley's most famous poems. This was a time when Britain was at the height of its imperial power, when Britain ruled over 10 million square miles of territory and around 400 million people, at a time when there were only around 1 billion people on the planet. At this time, 1816 to be exact, it was announced that a statue of Ramses II was acquired by the British Museum, and this, it's been suggested, was what inspired Shelley to write Ozymandias. Ramses II was an Egyptian pharaoh in the 13th century BC, and quite a powerful one too, and his Greek name was Ozymandias. To give you an idea of his power, there are statues of him all over Egypt, such as the one in this picture and he embarked on a huge building spree across Egypt and the lands that it ruled, building temples dedicated to himself as he went, such as the one in Abu Simbel. Now, this poem could be about how Ramses II was one of the most powerful rulers of all time, but now his power has disappeared and all that remains is this statue. However, it's more likely to be a statement about how power does not last forever, the culture and power of ancient Egypt are long gone, and this could be a nod from Shelley to those in power of the British Empire. He's warning that it won't last forever, and it didn't. Fun facts, Shelley was married to Mary Shelley, the author of Frankenstein, and in popular culture, Ozymandias is the name of an episode of the TV show Breaking Bad, in which the episode focuses on the poem's themes of greatness followed by descent and ultimately collapse. Similar reasons can be found when naming the character Ozymandias in the Watchmen comic book series by DC. And that's all for today's video. I hope you found it useful, and if you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It really helps out with YouTube's algorithms.
Thanks for watching and happy revising.